The Three Railway Engines Written by the Rev. W. Andre Edward's Day Out Once upon a time, there was a little engine called Edward. He lived in a shed with five other engines. They were all bigger than Edward and boasted about it. The driver won't choose you again, they said. He wants big, strong engines like us. Edward has not been out for a long time. He began to feel sad. Just then, the driver and fireman came along to start work. The driver looked at Edward. Why are you so sad? he asked. Would you like to come out today? Yes, please, said Edward. So the fireman lit his fire and made a nice lot of steam. Then the driver pulled the lever and Edward puffed away. He whistled, Look at me now! The others were very cross at being left behind. Away went Edward to get some coaches. Be careful, Edward, said the coaches. Don't bump and bang us like the other engines do. So Edward came up to the coaches very, very gently, and the shunter fastened the coupling. Thank you, Edward, said the coaches. That was kind. We are glad you are taking us today. Then they went to the station where the people were waiting. <whistles> Whistled Edward. Get in quickly, please. So the people got in quickly, and Edward waited happily for the guard to blow his whistle and wave his green flag. He waited and waited. There's no whistle, no green flag. Where is that guard? Edward was getting anxious. The driver and fireman asked the station master, Have you seen the guard? No, he said. They asked the porter, Have you seen the guard? Yes. Last night, said the porter. Edward began to get cross. Are we ever going to start? he said. Just then, a little boy shouted, here he comes! And there the guard was, running down the hill with his flags in one hand and his sandwich in the other. He ran onto the platform, blew his whistle, and jumped into his van. Edward puffed off. He did have a happy day. All the children ran to wave as he went past and met old friends at all the stations. He worked so hard that the driver promised to take him out again the next day. I'm going out again tomorrow, he told the other engines that night in the shed. What do you think of that? But he didn't hear what they thought, for he was so tired and happy that he fell asleep at once. Edward and Gordon One of the engines in Edward's shed was called Gordon. He was very big and very proud. You watch me this afternoon, little Edward he boasted, as I rush through with the express. That will be a splendid sight for you. Just then, his driver pulled the lever. Goodbye, little Edward, said Gordon, as he puffed away. Look out for me this afternoon. Edward went off, too, to do some shunting. Edward liked shunting. It was fun playing with trucks. He would come up quietly and give them a pull. Oh, 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 oh! screamed the trucks. Whatever is happening? Then he will stop, and the silly trucks will go bump into each other. Oh, 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 oh! They cried again. Edward pushed them until they were running nicely, and when they weren't expecting it, he will stop. One of them will be sure to run into another line. Edward played until there were no more trucks, and then he stopped to rest. Presently, he heard a whistle. Gordon came puffing along, very slowly and very crossly. Instead of nice, shiny coaches, he was pulling a lot of very dirty coal trucks. A good trade! A good trade! A good trade! He grumbled. The shame of it! The shame of it! The shame of it! He went slowly through, with the trucks clattering and banging behind him. Edward laughed 
and went to find some more trucks. Soon afterwards, a porter came and spoke to his driver. Gordon can't get up the hill. Will you take Edward and push him, please? They found Gordon halfway up the hill and very cross. His driver and fireman were talking to him severely. You're not even trying, they told him. I can't do it, said Gordon. The noisy trucks hold an engine back so. If there were coaches, now, clean, sensible things that come quietly, that would be different. Edward's driver came up. We came to push, he said. No use at all, said Gordon. You wait and see, said Edward's driver. They brought the chain back to the bottom of the hill. Edward came up behind the brake van, ready to push. I'm ready, said Edward. No good, grumbled Gordon. The guard blew his whistle, and they pulled and pushed as hard as they could. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it, puffed Gordon. I will do it. I will do it. I will do it, puffed Edward. I can't do it. I will do it. I can't do it. I will do it. I can't do it. I will do it. They puffed together. Edward pushed and puffed and puffed and pushed as hard as he ever could. And almost before he realized it, Gordon found himself at the top of the hill. I've done it! I've done it! I've done it! He said proudly and forgot all about Edward pushing behind. He didn't wait to say thank you, but ran so fast that he passed two stations before his driver could make him stop. Edward pushed so hard that when he got to the top, he was out of breath. Gordon ran on so fast that Edward was left behind. The guard waved and waved, but Edward couldn't catch up. He ran into the next station, where the driver and fireman said they were pleased with him. The fireman gave him a nice long drink of water, and the driver said, I'll get my paint tomorrow and give you a beautiful new coat of blue with red stripes. Then you'll be the smartest engine in the sheds. The Sad Story of Henry Once an engine attached to a train was afraid of a few drops of rain. It ran to a tunnel and squeaked through his funnel and never came out again. The engine's name was Henry. His driver and fireman argued with him, but he would not move. The rain will spoil my lovely green paint and red stripes, he said. The guard blew his whistle till he had no more breath and waved his flag until his arms ached. But Henry still stayed in the tunnel and blew steam at him. I'm not going to spoil my lovely green paint and red stripes for you, he said rudely. The passengers came and argued too, but Henry would not move. A fat director who was on the train told the guard to get a rope. We'll pull you out, he said. But Henry only blew steam at him and made him wet. They hooked the rope on and pulled, except the fat director. <clears throat> My doctor has forbidden me to pull, he said. They pulled and pulled and pulled, but still Henry stayed in the tunnel. Then they tried pushing from the other end. The fact director said, One, two, three, push! But did not help. <clears throat> My doctor has forbidden me to push, he said. They pushed and pushed and pushed, but still Henry stayed in the tunnel. At last, another train came. The guard waved his red flag, then stopped it. The two engine drivers and two firemen and the two guards went and argued with Henry. Look, it has stopped raining, they said. Yes, but it will begin again soon, said Henry. And what will become of my green paint with red stripes then? So they brought the other engine up, and it pushed and puffed and puffed and pushed as hard as it ever could. But still Henry stayed in the tunnel. 
then they gave it up. They told Henry, We shall leave you there for always and always and always. They took up the old rails, built a wall in front of him, and cut a new tunnel. Now Henry can't get out, and he watches the trains rushing through the new tunnel. He was very sad because no one will ever see his lovely green paint with red stripes again. But I think he deserved it. Don't you? Edward, Gordon, and Henry Edward and Gordon often went through the tunnel where Henry was shut up. Edward will say, Hello! And Gordon will say, Serves you right. Poor Henry had no steam to answer. His fire had gone out. Soot and dirt from the tunnel roof had spoiled his lovely green paint and red stripes. He was cold and unhappy. He wanted to come out and pull trains too. Gordon will always pull the express. He was proud of being the only engine strong enough to do it. There were many heavy coaches full of important people like the fact director who had punished Henry. Gordon was seeing how fast he can go. Hurry, hurry, hurry! Trickety truck, trickety truck, trickety truck, said the coaches. Gordon could see Henry's tunnel in front. In a minute, he thought, I'll poop, poop, poop at Henry and rush through and out into the open again. Closer and closer he came. He was almost there when crack. <laughs> he was in a cloud of steam and was going slower and slower. His driver stopped the train. What happened to me? asked Gordon. I feel so weak. You burst your safety valve, said the driver. You can't pull the train anymore. Oh dear, said Gordon, and we were going so nicely too. Look, there's Henry laughing at me. Gordon made a face at Henry and blew smoke at him. Everyone got out and came to see Gordon. Hmph, said the fact director. I never like these big engines. Always going wrong. Send for another one at once. When the guard went to find one, they uncoupled Gordon and ran him out to the siding out of the way. The only engine left in the shed was Edward. I'll come and try, he said. Gordon saw him coming. That's no use, he said. Edward can't pull a train. Edward puffed and pulled and pulled and puffed, but he couldn't move the heavy coaches. I told you so, said Gordon rudely. Why not let Henry try? Yes, said the fact director. I will. Will you help pull this train, Henry? he asked. Yes, said Henry at once. So Gordon's driver and fireman lit his fire some plate layers broke down the wall and put back the rails. And when he had steamed up, Henry puffed out. He was dirty, his boiler was black, and he was covered with cobwebs. Oh, I'm stiff. Oh, I'm so stiff, he groaned. You better have a run to ease your joints and find a turntable, said the fact director kindly. Henry came back feeling better, and they put him in front. said Edward. I'm ready, said a Henry. So am I. Pull hard, pull hard, pull hard, puffed Edward. We'll do it, we'll do it, we'll do it, puffed Henry. Pull hard, we'll do it, pull hard, we'll do it, pull hard, we'll do it, they puffed together. The heavy coaches jerked and began to move, slowly at first, then faster and faster. We've done it together, we've done it together, said Henry and Edward. You've done it, hooray, you've done it, hooray, you've done it, hooray, sang the coaches. All the passengers were excited. The fat director leaned out the window to wave to Edward and Henry, but the train was going so fast that his hat blew off into a field where a goat ate it for his tea. 
They never stopped till they came to the big station at the end of the line. The passengers got out and said, Thank you, and the fact director promised Henry a new coat of paint. Would you like blue and red? Yes, please, said Henry. Then I'll be like Edward. Edward and Henry went home quietly. On their way, they helped Gordon back to the sheds. All the three engines were great friends now. Wasn't Henry pleased when he saw his new coat? He's very proud of it, as all good engines are now. But he doesn't mind the rain now, because he knows that the best way to keep his paint nice is not to run into tunnels, but to ask his driver to rub him down when the day's work is over. Thank you.